as early as 1925, ja Japan and the uh, Soviet Union have been having secret deals with each other regarding fishing rights between the two countries, right? So, and the Soviet Union ended up giving up much of its fishing rights to Japan with seemingly no explanation, right? So these secretive treaties and alliances have continued up right, or have continued right until up to the fall of the Soviet Union. And basically, in the in the past 100 years of Japanese-Russian relations, they it, there are like a ton of different unanswered questions that people want to know about. Why is it that at the height of World War II, when the battles between these two countries were staying completely minimal, despite being on opposing sides, and why did Japan sign a peace treaty with Russia in 1941, just months before their allies Germany went to war with Russia? And why were relations between Japan and Russia always good throughout the Cold War, despite the major geopolitical differences between the countries, right? The answer was simple, that they shared a common secret, a common asset that had worked in both of their favors, and that asset was Finland. It's unclear as to why Finland was first thought up. Some say it was during the Cold War, and others say it was far back as the 1920s, but the necessity of Finland is quite simple. The agreement was that Japan can fish in the region of ocean between Sweden and Russia without worry for environmental repercussions. And after all, nobody's going to expect fishing regulations to be broken in a place where everyone thinks that there's a huge landmass, right? And in return, Russia will get a percentage of all of the fish that they distribute among their population. And it's a simple case of fishing in the Finnish Sea, transporting it across Russia, which is the real reason that the, the uh, Trans-Siberian Railway was constructed, and then shipping it from Eastern Russia to Japan under the disguise of Nokia products. This is why that this is why Nokia is the largest quote-unquote Finnish company, and which is also why Japan is the largest importer of Nokia products, despite the fact that very few people own Nokia phones in Japan, right? So there are clearly some unanswered questions to this conspiracy, um, but some frequently asked questions might be that, what about the Finnish people, right? Are they all in on the conspiracy? And no, people from Finland genuinely believe that they're from Finland. In reality, they're either in small towns on eastern parts of Sweden, western part of Russia, or the northern part of Estonia. What about uh, Finland's other exports other than Nokia, right? Finland's three biggest and three most well-known areas of industry are oil, tech, and software. The oil is gathered in offshore platforms where the rest of us believe that the landmass of Finland is. Again, to get the Japanese to avoid rigging regulations. The tech companies have always been explained with the Nokia posts, and software companies can easily redirect their IP addresses through the Finnish sea. And what about Helsinki? That's an enormous city on the world stage. It's actually located in eastern Sweden. It's not like the people flying there wouldn't notice. So what about everything else in Finland? There's a lot to it, and it couldn't all be made up. Well, 95% of, or 99% of Finland is forest. A lot of it doesn't need to be accounted for in addressing Finnish geography, right? So why do other countries go along with it? At first, it was a sign of goodwill between the Western countries and the Soviet Union, a bargaining chip that could be played. But Finland has since evolved into something much, much more, an idealistic placeholder for what countries should aspire to be. No real, no real country could so consistently place first in education, healthcare, gender equality, equality, literacy rates, and national stability. The least corrupt government in the world. Freedom of press, it's a con it's, and it's a concept for countries and other people to aspire to. But that's where the problems about Finland's, Finland's existence is disrupted. Or disputed, sorry. No country in the world could possibly be that good. Why the name Finland? Well, the country was originally made for fishing. What do fish have? Finns. Thus, Finland. You know? Eight. I'm Finnish, and your attack on my people and culture is insulting. I'm not insulting Finnish people or culture. I don't deny that there is Finnish culture. When you have collected a few minute, when you have a collective of a few million people identifying as Finnish, then of course a culture can be built around it. I'm simply saying that the landmass of Finland isn't actually there. Doesn't mean that there can't be a culture or an identity of being fin Finnish. This is enormous. This is an enormous conspiracy to keep secret. How could nobody have realized it? Other people have realized it. But imagine the ridiculousness of the statement, I don't believe Finland exists. Even if we did have undeniable proof of something to put in front of us, we would still hold the opinion that most of our friends, family, and acquaintances hold not to disrupt social convention. It's part of the human condition, really. So, what about GPS and satellite images? It's manipulated and forged. In parts of Estonia, Sweden, and Russia, 
there are allocated finish zones that the GPS locations are changed to match that of Finland. Satellite images are forged, forged, and I will send you a picture of what this part of the world actually looks like. Okay. Have I convinced you?